Yeah, and I, I was just checking the Excel file that I've built based off of his appointments. He's scheduled about 55 appointments for us since he wow. started. Wow, 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 and wow. We feel like he's ready with some coaching from Rodolfo to go to the next level of his sphere of, you know, like the more qualified people. Of uh huh. Um, but yeah, I mean, 55 appointments in the couple months that he's been working for us. That's phenomenal. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. So tell me, so actually let's take a step back, right. For the people that, okay, yeah. you know, cause we're, we're, we're going to show this to people, you know, the audience, you know, people out there uh, in, in our Facebook group, newsletter, people that we know, can you tell them who is the Serral team, right? Uh, you know, uh, uh, where you guys are based out of, what is it you guys do? Uh, what is it you guys do best than anyone else in that, in that whole area? Uh, tell us a little bit about you guys. So the serial team, uh, we're a team that we born in a multicultural zip code here in Washington state. Uh, one of the most multicultural zip codes in the state, uh, 163 languages spoken in this zip code. So <laughs> it's crazy. very multicultural, uh, very multicultural. Lo lots of food from everywhere. So it's kind of the unique proposition for the city. Uh, we're a veteran community in the South Seattle area, uh, close to the airport, and uh, becoming a neighborhood of choice uh, with COVID-19. Yeah. yeah, because we're close to downtown, but not so far in the suburbs, and, uh, and close to the airport. And uh, something that we noticed close to the T3, the fiber optic, that now is very attractive to people moving away from the city. Now, gotcha. some people don't ask for a school districts. Now they ask, hey, where is the T3 going? Right? No, but, uh, because of the remote, because of remote learning, all that stuff. Remote, right, work, right. remote work and remote learning, right? It's been crazy. Right, and the thing is this, uh, a family of uh, four, right? It's a husband, wife, and two kids. Uh, four of them in Zoom calls in the morning, mm. uh, it slows down the computer. And it's a critical component for that. So anyway, what we do best, uh, we are a niche community. So um, all multicultural people you know, from every color, region, country, religion, everyone. So uh, comes to us. Uh, that's kind of our value proposition is that we know how to negotiate. We, we culturally, I'm from Mexico, so we know how to bargain. And we push it and, and a lot of our sellers, they say, I chose you because I know you're going to push the envelope. Yeah. Uh, it's natural in your skin and your blood and your blood. And, and, uh, and that's what we want for a, a representative to sell our property. Uh, you know, we're talking about ISA, you know, you guys have had, you know, ISAs on your team before. I mean, you know, you've got one working on your team right now. It's been working up for you guys for the last couple of months. So a lot of things, a lot, one of the, one of the things that a lot of folks struggle with when they first get an ISA on the team is like that, that first month, I think is, I, I usually say people can kind of figure out that first month, make it that, you know, adapt, get their ISA up to speed. Um, they're going to be successful. It's usually that, that first month is really, really critical. Can you talk a little bit about that? What did your first month look like? And what did you have your ISA calling on or what was the ramp up period like for you folks? Because, you know, right now you're in a really good spot. You know, you mentioned your ISA said 55 appointments in the last 60 days, which is phenomenal, phenomenal. Yeah. Um, what did you have them start out with and where do you want them to get to as far as what they're calling, right? Do they start off some test stuff, practice stuff, test stuff, and what are they calling right now? Right. Um, so, yeah, uh, we were dating at the very beginning, right? <laughs> Getting to know each other, not really sure what to expect. So to be really honest, we just gave him um, lists, smart lists of people we hadn't talked to in seven, 10 plus years. And it didn't matter if he stumbled or fumbled because <laughs> we kind of thought That's like, smart. well, we've lost the relationship. Um, uh, and who knows if they're still out there and even remember us. Um, so it was, it was a test um, and he really exceeded our expectations. You know, um, we're connected via text. And so of course we had uh, two um, initial conversations where we told him all about who we are and what our expectations are and how we're gonna present the information to him. And he asked a bunch of questions and then uh, we, we all agreed we felt ready. 
Um, and then he and I are connected every day via text. So I found that when he really started, especially the first week, there was a lot of, you know, texting back and forth, like, hey, somebody's calendar shows completely full, but you told me they had afternoons available, you know, so he took good notes, which we appreciated. Um, he asked a lot of questions until we really got into a good, into a good rhythm. Um, and so he's, He's now, you know, he's really proven himself to us. Um, he's conscientious. He's effective on the phone. He gets the appointments for us. Um, he works well in the system, um, scheduling follow-ups to confirm and follow-ups to make sure the appointment happened. So, you know, like he's, you know, he's really on it. Um, I did. He's very diligent. I did, of course, ask him to do all of that. I do think, though, that it's in his blood <laughs> because he's just, I mean, he's only, he, he just really automatically started doing it. So, so that was fantastic. Um, and now we, since we've realized his talent and his potential, Rodolfo is spending time chatting with him a couple times a week, hopefully ideally every day, um, because we want to move him closer and closer to Rodolfo's sphere of people. Um, who, kind of, kind who of the higher him. touch, higher value uh, uh, right. set of folks, right? I mean, that, and again, and I think I think it's really, really smart of you guys to not start them there. That's <laughs> not yeah. you want to you want to learn with, right? You want to course correct. Uh, or typically, not you can avoid it. Avoid it uh, you know, because people are going to make mistakes and they're going to ask questions. Right. They're not going to be sure, right? Uh, I think that's uh, that's 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 it's a really smart progression progression to be able to call people that your past clients, more recent past clients, maybe, right? Right, right. And so whenever I assign him a smart list, they'd say, you know, these are buyers or these are potentially sellers because they bought from us within the last five years. So he always runs a script by me. You know, I give him a few ideas about how to improve it, maybe based on who the agents were. But I, I label the smart lists like these are Rodolfo's clients bought last three to five years so then he has that reminder before he clicks into it so yeah so he's he's really proving himself and like i said moving closer to our inner circle <laughs> i got you i got you and, and question for you guys because you're you're a unique team right when you have that multicultural ability um you know all of our isas are bilingual not all of them actually use spanish you know i'd say across the u.s when we talk to let's say like internet leads coming in I'd say about 10 to 15% of those are going to be Spanish speakers, no matter where they are. It could be Chattanooga, Tennessee, uh, you know, Louisiana, Texas, California, Washington State. And, and the more Hispanic areas, it's going to be 25, 30% of that, right? And then in, in the heavily Hispanic areas, it's going to be 50, 50. But outside of those like key areas, sometimes it's only 10, 15% of folks, you know, across the board. I think your, your area is very multicultural. A lot of Spanish speakers from Mexico, Latin America, other places. Do you find that he uses his Spanish on a daily basis or is it more like every, if, if needed, he brings it up? No, no, no. I'd say 95% of his calls are in Spanish. Yes. Oh, that's crazy. Wow. And he, he connects really well with that demographic on a personal level because he oh, was awesome. also, he spent some time living in the States and so he can really relate to, to folks. A hundred percent. hundred percent. And, 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 you know, and again, that's my culture, right? So in, in the culture, uh, that personal connection is so important that, that you know that someone that's going to be able to not just speak your language but the figurative speak your language kind of thing right uh i think it, it, it it's it's relationship based so business is, i mean it's business but relationship, it's relationship comes first based. right and it, and mm -hmm. i don't know how to describe i don't know if it's tonality empathy right uh, uh, you know, everything about that, that, that you're willing to kind of ask the right questions, ask it in a sensitive way uh, that makes all the difference. What do you guys think? Right. And, and, and many times I, I have shown to the appointments and it's like, where's Rodrigo? And we want to meet him. Where is he? Bring him <laughs> over. And then uh, we have a Bring list. Of home. Uh, they gave me two tamales, one for me and one for Rodrigo. And I was like, thank you, Rodrigo. <laughs> you know, I'm going to think of you when I eat this one. I'm making it you. I'm making it you. <laughs> and you know, the interesting thing too is that we, we um, as a local team, also feel very much that he's part of our crew. 
Um, and I, I just had one of our team members who didn't realize he was in Mexico City mm -hmm. yesterday or two days ago asked me, so if we have a pizza party this week, can you make sure to invite Rodrigo? I don't have his That's contact info. Like, we really want to meet him. He schedules so many appointments for us. And I was like, well, I don't know if he can make it. But, uh. <laughs> right, yeah. So <laughs> naughty. The GPS says might might not make it in time, right? Yeah, so you know, I mean, but, you know, that's a crazy thing with remote to remote work. You know, the the during the pandemic uh, is really right. you know, at least you know when all these options have blown up, right? And I think it's really changed the nature of work for for a lot of yes. folks. The ones that are willing to try out these remote options because everyone was remote for a while there. Everyone everywhere, if you were still right. working, if you were an essential worker, you were probably working remotely. I think it, it brought down a lot of paradigms uh, that a lot of folks had, a lot of, li lot of limiting beliefs around remote work that a lot of people had, mm -hmm. um, you know, and it's really uh, uh, changed things. Uh, you know, I think it's, there's going to be some permanent changes, even though our things are, are settling down now, you know, we're kind of coming back. Oh, yes. um, there's going to be some permanent changes for those that are willing to try new things, for those that are willing to try new things. Right. And, you know, for that matter, I, I think... I, I actually prefer the email and the texts because it allows me to like review what I'm gonna say before I send it and to be sure I'm being really clear in my instructions. And then we've even had, you know, the instance where he reads it and then he asks a question or two, but then he texts me back, oh no, 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 never mind. I just reread it. Don't worry, I got it, I'm on it. And then he implements it. And so it's, I think it's really useful because you've got this built-in tool right there. Yeah, right. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. That's super. Uh, but at, at the beginning, you know, where I, I can say the success to set up properly the first month is that accountability person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, uh, because most of us, we are go, 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 10,000 view. Uh, high D. High D personality, right? And we need, I, I always said to somebody who is, hey, I want to get an ISA, make sure you have a Kraken in your team. <laughs> and that's Shannon's nickname, the Kraken. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you need no, that absolutely. person. I, I, and I think, I, you know what, that's a really good point, that that accountability has to be there, right? Because right. I think us on Power ISA, we can hold them accountable to like the, the key performance metrics that are kind of general across all campaigns, calls made, contacts made, conversions. That doesn't say, tell the whole story, right? And I don't think it tells the whole right. story. Uh, are they holding? Are you holding them accountable to your goals? Are you holding them accountable to your standards? Right. Uh, the ones you want your ISA to meet? Do you have standards that you want your ISA to meet? I mean, that's that's an even better. Like, take a step back, right? Do you even have that? Uh, and are you driving those home? And, and here's the most important thing. You know, I don't know if you saw this with Rodrigo, but uh, you know, no one's ever going to start off perfect. They're going to start. There is a learning curve, but you have to see progress. You have to see them getting. Like, for example, Shannon, that first week or two of text, like eight texts a day. Um, I'm hoping. I'm assuming that stopped at some point, right? It's not eight texts a day. Maybe a few texts when you send instructions, like cl maybe clarifying some things. Um, you know, and, and that that traffic and that those questions they get better. The, the, they ask better questions later, right? And and yeah. and they bring stuff to your attention instead of you having to kind of. And that baby, I think a lot of us, when we bring someone new on our team, can kind of think that that babysitting mode is permanent, right? right. And I'm like, no, 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 that's, that, that's the wrong person on your team. That's what that means, right? It's not that we don't, we don't want to admit it, but that's what that means, right? If, you, if you're constantly having to go back and check somebody's work, and you guys have been in the, in the business long enough, you know, like, we know that that happens sometimes. You got someone in, and they're just not, not progressing past that initial phase. And it could be a motivation issue. It could be a focus issue. It could be, you know, they're just not a good fit. You know, like like DR, our, our, our coach we've had, DR, would say, yeah. trying to release them back in the industry sometimes, right? Because they're just right. not the right fit. Right. Well, I will say we still communicate probably at least that many times a day. Um, the content has changed. So every time... He, t he, every time he sets an appointment, he texts me the information so that A, I can check it in our CRM and B, check it on the calendar and C, send a congratulatory text to our agent to say, hey, awesome, you just got another, congrats, you just got another appointment, So right? you got account accountability to the ISA, accountability to your team, so you're putting all those pieces in place, right? E exactly, because, you know, as lovely as Rodrigo is, I ain't paying him just to make appointments that don't go anywhere, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> so uh, I am I am the middle, I am the middleman. So we, sent, we spend more of our texts now kind of, 
confirming and celebrating those um, and following up to say, oh, yes, you know, you Lisa's got the, the buyer agency agreement signed. Great job. Everybody kind of gives a, a virtual high five. Right. right. Um, and also the content of those texts um, change now because we see his talent and we want him to grow. Right. Um, so we're challenging him. We're providing him with like more scripts, more coaching, you know, things, things of that nature. So, yeah. Some we, of those we talking are, points, right? Some of those talking points about, the, I think one of the things that sets apart the in-house local ISA sometimes is the, is the local knowledge. And, and that's usually not that the, a virtual ISA or remote ISA can't master that. It just takes time. And it takes right. that coaching and teaching them, right? right. And, you know, this is how you say Duwamish. This is how you say, what was that? What was that Welsh name of that community in South Seattle? I'm trying to, is that Bryn, Bryn Mar? Bryn Mar? Oh, oh yeah. 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 So you know what I'm talking about, right? So there's always something like that. <laughs> every part, every part where there's Welsh people. I love the Welsh people. Your names are bizarre, you know, for that community. Uh, it's yeah. impossible to pronounce. But if you're local, that's not an issue. I mean, you you kind of right. get it, right? Q, Q Wallop is another great one, right? Like, you know, you know, if you've ever been there, you're not from there, you don't know how to pronounce that. No, no, no. There's always those little things, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, exactly. Yeah. 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 So like that. yeah. So we're working on, I guess, the finesse now, right? right. Because exactly. it's been a really exactly. successful relationship up until up until now and hopefully far into the future. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. So, you know, kind of, kind of putting it all together, what would you recommend for folks that are, you know, thinking of hiring their first ISA, bringing them into the team? Uh, what, you know, you, you guys have been through this experience already a few times. Uh, what would you recommend? And, and also bringing on new team members. You have a few team members that have been with you for guys for years. So, you know, and, 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 then, and then there's always going to be some churn on, on your team members. Right. What would you say uh, about building, you know, wrapping those people up. Oh, I'm going to leave it open. What recommendations do you give folks who are thinking of adding a new team member in that production role and that lead generation role? Uh, what would you say to them thinking about that? Well, the, the, the first one is have set up ready, right? Uh, have a list of phone numbers and everything for at least for the first 30 days. Have it very clear. Uh, you mentioned smart list a lot, Shannon. You mentioned smart list, and I love that, right? Because yeah. you're like, this is not like some random ego pop people, right? Right, it's right, like, right. No, no, no. Here's like call this list, right? Like right, right, right. I love this that. is our database. Drop our names. And, and we have a big database, 36, 30, 33,000. 33,000. Wow. 26,000, no Rodolfo. <laughs> like his personal <laughs> friends, 33 total, right? Of course. So, yeah, yeah. so and Shannon makes a combination of that list to, to be very specific for that day, right? And, and today's people who bought this year, between this year and this year, and, and it's very clear, right? Uh, I would say that, have, have a, uh, that uh, set up the accountability session. Uh, okay. If it's going to be at the beginning of the day or at the end of the day or throughout the day, uh, it be consistent with that. Uh, it's not magic. Don't spec magic and uh, the magic we do it because the ISA is only a person knocking the door for you, yeah. right? And, and having that door open and then you show up and that's the magic, right? Yeah. And uh, uh, reward um, you ISA, you know, they want feedback, you know, working alone in a room in who knows where yeah. for eight hours, Seriously. cold calling, it, it's a lot of energy, right? Yeah. And, uh, and for every correction, uh, you should give two, two kind of positive affirmations. You, you know what I mean? Like, hey, you did this great, this great, this great, and then will you correct this one, right? Uh, because uh, energy, at the end of the day, is energy through that phone call, right? Yeah. And, and be sure that you follow up once there's a successful appointment, follow up. You know? there, they're hungry, I notice they're hungry to know what happened. You know, like what happened? Or they, they want to celebrate with you. Yeah. Absolutely. And sometimes we move on, like, oh yeah, it's time, move on, right? They I say, had no idea. Okay. We have exactly. him calling like that three times a, a listing that he we already signed, but we never told him. And like he keeps calling. <laughs> He's ready. Oh, uh, He's still ready. oh, he already signed with another agent. Oh, wait, it's you. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. 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 So I, I agree with Rodolfo. I think, you know, that 
that infrastructure and the conversation about scripts, like what do you know, what have you practiced and how does that apply to the lists right. I'm about to give you? Like all that's, that's true. really important. You, you started off with database, right? You started with database, which is a little bit unique. Uh, you know, not everyone starts that way. Right, right. Um, I think one thing, thanks to you, Gustavo, and your team, was that, you know, the initial onboarding conversations that we had to meet Rodrigo, that was facilitate, facilitated by Temo um, at the very beginning, you know, to be honest, the first call was like really relationship almost, like, hey, who are you? How are you? Where are you from? What's your experience? Like, we heard it from you, right? And that was great because we knew that that opened the door. We wanted to talk to him and get to know him. And even though we had agreed, like, he's our guy, we needed to take that time to kind of get to know and bond and share who we were. Um, and I think... It, it made both of us more invested, right? right? I felt like his energy and his desire to like really do right by us. Um, so it, it, so thanks to your team for setting that up. And then of course we got into the nitty gritty, like this is our CRM and this is how we're gonna communicate. Yeah. And these are the calendar links and these are our agents and you know, long list of like, this is who we are. <laughs> these are all of our contact details. And so-and-so takes buyers, but not sellers and Portuguese, but not English, you know? So it was, it was a lot of, lot of logistics and detail to build out at the beginning after that relationship. Yeah. Meet and and, you know, and, and you're so right. You know, I think for a role that is as key as that, or that ISA who's going to have their hand in the database, generating those appointments, feeding the team, they're essentially helping you guys feed the team. Uh, uh, these appointments, yeah. such a key role. I think it's worth that investment 100%, right? Getting the systems in place, setting those expectations. Uh, and there's a lot of work up front. I agree with you. That's why I think those first 30 days are so key. If, if that work doesn't happen those first 30 days, it's really difficult to go back later and try and kind of fix that, right? right. You know, it's, 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 it's challenging. It's really, really challenging. It's hard to, to get everyone back on the same page. Expectations haven't been met. People can get upset. So I think doing it the right way uh, from the very start uh, just makes, uh, uh, for me, it's like, okay, great. If we have a strong start to a campaign, we'll address any issues that come up. And, and, if, and, and time and time again, that proves true. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, you know, I want to appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Love you guys. You know, oh, actually, a question I'm asking a lot of teams right nowadays because of the market that we're in. What is your best source for your listings right now? Because, you know, I mean, and this is true even more so in Seattle. Seattle is pretty. You know, Seattle, Austin, Texas, Atlanta, they're some of the hottest markets. Denver, Colorado, Colorado Springs, some of the hottest markets in the whole country right now uh, because of the desirability of those areas. Um, what are you doing to get listings in this insane uh, I will, market? I will you tell you uh, a new source that we've been very successful, that divorce attorneys. No way! That's like yes. bold one on one, like from the from the old school. That's working. Right. That's working for you guys right now. And the thing is, this uh, you know, people working from home uh, oh, is not working for every marriage. Wow, they're you know overwhelmed. What? That you know, that is so. I see. Like, I saw a report. Like you know how you know how China went into like lockdown way yeah. sooner than all of us, right? And that their divorce rate like quadrupled in the first, you know, oh, yes. month or two, right? The people actually <laughs> spending time together. I'm like, I wonder if that's going to happen. I had not thought about that for a yeah. year, to be honest with you. Like, that is, yeah. And so many other things that happened because of the pandemic. That's one of them, right? It's crazy. Yes. And, and you know, the, the sad, well, divorce is sad. Um, death is more, yeah. more yeah. sad. Probate. Probate. Probates also. That's great. Well, you Someone know, started it's, doing probates. It's the market. It's the market that we're in, right? You know, a hundred percent. I think you know, my, remote work and the pandemic and all the dynamics. Um, it's it's the market that we're in, and those listings. You gotta hustle for those listings. You gotta find them. Gotta get them. However you can, the market demands it, right? Yeah, and I, I think also third, um, Gustavo, and, and really overlooked is your database. Database. Just checking database. in with caring, like, how are you? Are you healthy? And, you know, are you working remotely? And is your space still working for you, family life, work life? And the resounding answer is no, because we nice. didn't plan to need three home offices kids in school, wife's office, husband's office, you know, <laughs> people, right. people didn't buy like that. I think know, it was so. a national desk shortage from Ikea at one point, right? Because everyone was trying <laughs> to find the desk for their kid. 
uh, like in their yeah. in the fit in the bedroom, and they're like, "Well, okay, no, <laughs> not going to happen for the next few months." Uh, it was, you know, cra crazy times. I agree with you. I think everyone took a look at their living space and said, "Hmm, if this is going to go on for more than a few months, I think we need to make some some uh, some changes here, right?" Yeah, Pretty crazy. absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Love that because I know I know you guys, you know, have a really really structured, very intentional, purposeful approach with your database. So I'm sure that's, you know, working out really, really well for you guys. But thanks for sharing that. Thanks for sharing that. Because that's a question I get all day, every day. What's working for listings? What are the top agents doing to generate listings? I did, I did a, a, like, a, like an informal poll uh, in, uh, in this huge Facebook group called Lab Code Agents. I think I got something like 600 responses from agents on there. Wow. The number one source, because I, where'd you get your last few listings? Like right now, in the spring of 2021, where'd you get them? Something like three quarters said their database, right? Because the market is so hot. I mean, it's, it's, it's you know, it, that is, it makes sense that that can be a great source of, of, of your, listings for folks. Yeah, your relationship is your competitive edge. Yeah, yeah. Uh, hundreds. Anything you can do to, to can strengthen that, continue that. You know, you you folks don't just call your sphere. You have you, well, you have a pretty huge database. You're a little bit unique. You have an enormous database, but you treat it all as your database, not just the one your top one hundred. Like, hey, there's thirty three thousand people we can build a relationship with, um, and you've added a lot of leverage to help you accomplish. And that's really smart. And I think people, you know, when I was in the business, I worked my database of four hundred people, right? So that was kind of it for me, right? And I would call them, you know, multiple times a year and get, I'd get about 20, 30 transactions from them a year, pretty consistently. Now I think about that. If I had 30,000 people in that database, even if I only owned them tangentially, well, I better start a relationship with them. I, know, I know they're interested in real estate. Well, then that's a great way to start a relationship, you know, uh, with them. Uh, you know, I think that's, a, that's an even better, an even better, you know, source to, to work and to nurture and to develop, right? So love it, love it, love it. Well, thank you guys for sharing that. Thank you so much for your time. Appreciate you guys. If anyone wants to know more about you guys or send you a referral, what's the best way to reach you guys? Uh, my cell phone number, 206-291-8329. Rodolfo okay. Hernandez. Perfect, perfect. Awesome. And online, what's the best way to find out more about you guys and your team? www.crealteam.com. And that's C like Seattle, S-C-A, real, real estate, R-E-A-L, team.com. Serialteam.com. Okay, thank you yeah. so much, guys. Appreciate you. Thank Thanks. you, Gustavo. Thank Adios. you. Adios. Okay, thanks, everybody. <laughs>